For many years, I viewed Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 as this unnecessary and inferior sequel. I told my story back at the beginning of all this, how I replayed the first game in the week leading up to this one, and feeling bored because I just played all this stuff in my mind, but this time it wasn't a story driven. We broke new ground with Pokemon in the DS era by going in a story driven direction, and I remember thinking it was a shame that we finished that era on a game that, in my words, had no story. Remember. I didn't get to the final act of the game my first time. I got to about six badges and then lost interest and didn't play all the way to the end. I was comparing it to how much had happened in the story in the first game by the six badge mark and concluded that, yeah, this game is just never going to pick up or get better. And that was all I thought of it for a long time. I always thought that it was kind of a shame that the DS era didn't end on black and white, which in my mind were the best Pokemon games. But then... I played it again, and I didn't rush through everything. I gave the side modes a chance instead of just noping out of them. I tried all the new things that this game added. I didn't just try to rush through, get eight badges, and call it a day, and that was the difference. This game is utterly massive. If the episode title count is anything to go off of, yes it is. You can do anything you would want to do in the Pokemon world in this game, and I see that is one of the reasons why this is often called the best Pokemon game ever made by many fans nowadays, and I think it's a prime example of, for lack of a better word, a piece of art not being appreciated in its time. At the time, the fandom was incredibly split on these games. This is the lowest selling main entry in Pokemon series history. The 3DS was out and everyone was all like, well, you know, why is this not a 3DS game? Why would anyone want to buy a DS game in 2012? It was a case where I was part of the audience that missed the point. This game is golden. It's another case where they did a direct sequel to a beloved game in the series, and I think they knocked it out of the park. There's cool callbacks to the story from the first game, all sorts of new things for you to do. You can revisit locations from the first one. There's lots of new locations. I think it is a good thing whenever areas from another game appear in a future one. Some of those areas feel like home. You'll be picking out all sorts of differences, more of them, if you're so familiar with the source material that you've been through it a million times. And that's how I'd describe this game. It feels like home. And yeah, the story that it does tell might not be as grandiose as the first one, but I don't think it really needs to be. Not everything has to be like that. The point is just all that you can be in this world. Fighting aliens and giant robots, running your own shopping mall, and connecting with other players through it. Playing an augmented reality game that I'm sure was a partial inspiration for Pokemon Go. <laughs> Becoming a famous movie star and getting recognized. <laughs> Catching legendary Pokemon in your freaking dreams, because why not? <laughs> And with that, I bid you, hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy, and welcome to the final episode of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Today, we're going to be focusing on something that has shaped this entire experience for us. The medals. Up to this point, I've earned 180 different medals, and I've talked to you about more than 200 different medals. But there's a few that slipped through the cracks that I didn't have a good time to really talk about, and I have not given you a strategy for. That's what we're here to do today, to finish your medal box. The medals I never earned were Super Rod Fisherman and Mighty Fisher. This is tied to fishing up 100 different Pokemon. You do not need to catch them. The type catcher medals, which I've already been over. Also, I was mistaken. The electric type catcher is called electric type catcher. Electric collector is a typo in a guide that I found. Sorry. Try to see if you can catch 50 Pokemon in a day. I would recommend pairing this up with the type catcher medals or just completing the Unova Pokedex. Might as well not go all out catching Pokemon your first time through the adventure and see if you can get 50 new ones that you don't have in one day so you can kill two birds with one stone. 
I feel like completing the Pokedex will also get you those ones for filling up all the PC boxes, evolving 100 Pokemon, all of those. I feel like finishing the Pokedex will get you this daycare one as well, where you have to leave and pick up 100 Pokemon from the daycare. That one will happen no problem with just getting pre-evolved forms of Pokemon for filling in spots in the decks. Super Rich is tied to spending 10 million Poke Dollars in stores. I was able to confirm, thanks to Salted Neos, that this does indeed count as spending money in Joint Avenue. This works out because in Joint Avenue, you can spend $50,000 to buy eight levels for your Pokemon. That's going to be how you get this. Raising up teams, buying effort values, those kinds of things from within Joint Avenue. I never could get a thousand people in the Sea Gear. I hosted multiple meetups at conventions and I got 389. I hope to get there one day, but this day is not today. I'll be organizing further meetups at further conventions. If you follow me on social media, I'll let you know about them when they pop up. Here's the big one. The hit metal you've had since the first day of your journey, and it's been bothering the hell out of you that this feature is shut down. GameSync, it was a wonderful technology to connect dream and reality. I'm here to tell you that I have a solution for you. There is a program called Entralinked that you can find by just searching for it. If you were to run that on your PC and do the DNS exploit where you go into your internet settings and change auto obtain DNS to no and manually type in what it gives you, as long as it's on the same network as your DS, connect. Communication error, error 60,000. <laughs> GameSync, it's a wonderful technology. After looking at the program again and clicking the little button that says help on the top bar, I found out that this is a pretty common issue where you might need to go into the pal pad and get your friend code and also might need to go in Nintendo DS connections in the system settings to access your Wi-Fi connection ID and then update the program with those details and then it should work. Fingers crossed. I don't know if this affects it, but I went into the settings from the main menu and created game sync data. That sounds important. I don't know that you need to necessarily go there to do it, but I hadn't done it before. Oh. <gasps> what? GameSync has run out of energy. It will take one day to recharge it. Please wait one day without changing your DS. Oh God. Okay, so it's real time based, but it did go through. No, <laughs> he was right here. I tried the clock trick and that didn't work either. It looks like I really do have to wait a whole day for this. Damn it. I changed my clock earlier today for an unrelated reason. Tomorrow for sure. With this game save, I'll be able to check this off from a meaningless checklist that bothers me. It is the way of us non-neurotypicals. Come on, come on. Ah, I actually have this many. Who should I tuck in? Crap. Uh. Uh. Um. Who wants to go to bed? Here, have a nap, Shaman. As a public service announcement, if you tucked in a Pokemon to the Dream World and um, never got them out before the service shut down, to this day, you can still sign into the service and get them back out. They have never disabled it. It's kind of nice they did that. It's sort of like a Pokemon bank has stayed online despite everything for the longest time. Shaman fell asleep, it's sleeping soundly. Disconnecting. So we'll leave Shaman in bed for a bit. Oh no, oh, he's not here. Uh, I think I need to complete my, I think I need to wake Shaman up to get it. By opening the dashboard in Entralinked, we go into a web browser and can sign in using our game sync ID to determine what Pokemon will appear in the entry forest. We can select any Pokemon at all, making it so you can essentially get hacked Pokemon into the game if you so wish through an in-game function, no cheat device required. 
That's not really my style, so as much as I'd like to have all Arceus's, I'm just gonna go for stuff that was legitimately available at the time. This dashboard allowing you to select anything is significant because some Pokemon had abilities programmed in that were never distributed, and by the time they were made available with their hidden abilities, they changed them to other things in later generations because they were quite overpowered. These were Zapdos with Lightning Rod. Thank Arceus's chin that we never had to deal with this in-game. That is so overpowered. Zapdos is great enough as it is. This was changed to Static in X and Y once they finally distributed it. Raikou with Volt Absorb, Entei with Flash Fire, Suicune with Water Absorb, all of these became inner focus in later generations. And last but not least, Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure had the ability Shadow Tag, which was later changed to Infiltrator. And thankfully, they would never go on to make an overpowered ghost type ever have Shadow Tag for its ability ever again. Finding a list of all legitimately available Pokemon is a little tough. There's a thread on Smogon that documents what they were in October of 2010, around the time that Black and White released in Japan. And then there's a Cerebi page that lists all of the events that happened in the dream world and what those Pokemon and ability combinations were. I've linked those below in the description. You can use this to farm Joint Avenue visitors. You could use this to farm Master Balls. <laughs> I will not be doing that. I just want the Pokemon. And then a uh, Sea Gear skin. I talked about these in the past. They're special skins that you can get for the Sea Gear and for the Pokedex. You can finally get these in game. You may only have one at a time. There's no in game menu for changing it, sadly. You can upload custom images to this thing. What is this witchcraft? You can actually unlock the Charming Muna and Meloetta musicals that I told you about earlier. And then you can set how many levels the Pokemon will gain while it's asleep. Hit save profile. Use Game Sync to wake up your Pokemon. Download your selected content. Wake it up. I'm shaming you for sleeping in. All of this that I've shown you didn't become available until partway through the production of this series. And that made me kind of sad because we could have played through the whole game with a sick skin like this on the bottom screen the whole time with our Pokedex looking like this, all personalized and stuff. That would have been neat and would have really visually set things apart. You can tell I, I guess I do have kind of an eye for details now that I say all that out loud, but I, I always wish I could do more. Yes, come here, come to Papa. Good night, Metal. It's finally mine. <laughs> I'm having an episode in the middle of this Pokemon Center. I'm sorry, everyone. I bet you want to get one of those custom menu skins for your Sea Gear too. Well, several of them were officially made. Sadly, very few of these were released in all regions of the world. For comparison, Japan got all 15 of them, of course. Europe and America got eight. Australia and everywhere else got seven. You want to know the ultimate slap in the face though? One of the Japan-only skins was for the Pokemon World Championships. Which, by the way, was set in America that year. Next up, we go to Entralink once we have woken up our Pokemon. It's beautiful in the evening. The entry forest connects dreams and reality. People say dreams come true here. Is anything you'd like to know? Nah, we'll just go on in. It boggles my mind why following Pokemon weren't in this game when they had all of these sprites for every single one of them, including New Bellsprout looks like its head is deformed when it's turned into Yeah! But every seems to want to join Blaze's party. Hey! Aw, oh, its wings look awfully cute like that. You go to bag and you'll have one dream ball in your inventory. A dream ball functions the same as a master ball, just that it's only usable inside of the dream world. And there we are. Butterfree has joined our party, or PC box, whatever. Butterfree, the butterfly Pokemon. It loves the honey of flowers and can locate flower patches that it have even tiny amounts of pollen. What if I talk to another one? I'll talk to Pidgey. Just getting all the real winners here. Your animation looks atrocious. You look so dead inside. Some of the old Pokemon don't get all that good a treat. What if I use a Pokeball? 
I can use the Pokeball. You always have one Dream Ball in your inventory by default in these encounters. Wow. Uh. Wow, Pidgey, way to suck. So you can use other balls if you want, but getting Pokemon in Dream Balls is somewhat prestigious, and I would probably recommend just doing that to make it easy and so you're not spending any money. You know what else? There's medals for catching Pokemon from the Dream World. This goes all the way up to 100 Pokemon caught. You may do up to 10 of them once per day. I'd like to add that this means that no metal is truly unobtainable any longer. The fans have stepped in and made all of them possible to get on actual hardware with no hacking whatsoever. Entralink. Funfest missions. I was running around to unlock more Funfests and I found this item ball I never collected. <laughs> the next medal I lack is to clear every single Funfest mission. Only has to be level one. It's still pretty hard to do though. There's certain missions like this one that are related to events, those do not count, and then there's version exclusive events, those also don't count. In total, you should have 37 of these. Some of these missions unlock invisibly after defeating the champion and getting the super rod. There's exactly one that I never obtained, it's in Humilao City. and it's right next to the friggin' Pokemon Center. He will not give you this until you've become the champion, making it one of the most obscure ones. Here's the full list of every single Entralink mission. I'm missing a few, but they're all tied to just clearing other ones, so as long as you have this list and clear all of them, you'll unlock all of them as well. There's a few differences, such as quiet hidden grottos being noisy hidden grottos in another version, um, but besides that, should be able to use this list. Find Steelix is the last non-event one. They expect you to find 30 Steelix in five minutes to do the level four of this one. That is disgusting. Rolling it back for a second, I want to talk about the Funfest mission Search Hidden Grottos. This one's available in both versions. All you have to do is beat the champion and find one Pokemon in a hidden grotto. Easier said than done, but still. The two of us working together for a full 10 minutes couldn't find a single Pokemon in any hidden grotto. With a guide, by the way. Nope. <laughs> Another trainer and it's the f***ing hiker theme. Bum ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba ba da Another trainer! <laughs> this is amazing! I'm just finding like every trainer I skipped over the course of this whole thing. Oh my god, his name is Steve! <laughs> I get- I get the hiker dance and then I get friggin' Steve! I got a Drifloon! <laughs> Clear this, and you'll unlock the aforementioned noisy hidden grottos in Black 2, which will forcibly fill every hidden grotto with a stun key. But much, much more importantly, in White 2, you get quiet hidden grottos, which fills every hidden grotto with Glammeow. Glammeow is one of the most remote Pokemon. It's almost never normally catchable in any Pokemon game. You probably want this. Another I haven't done is scoring a thousand points in a fun fest. I've done a hundred. There's a medal for having 30 people at once. This was not enough for me to get a thousand points. I think at minimum, you'd probably need a physical gathering of 50 people locally playing this game. I'll make this happen someday, I promise. It will be glorious. Besides that, all we're missing is the Elite Four challenges. My tip for this would be to have one strong Pokemon that is dual type, such as, say, in this example, Metagross, and then have five level one Beldums that you've bred from that Metagross in the other slots of your party. They exist only to revive Metagross or use items on Metagross on their turns. The one and only medal for doing it with only one Pokemon is easily done with Reshiram and Curum. It only cares if there's one Pokemon in the Hall of Fame entry at the end, meaning you can just fuse them before the final battle and have two Pokemon before that. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that does it for medals. That's the end of it. I've given you a strategy for every single one or obtained it myself. Except one that we'll be getting a little bit later, that is. 
So now we move on to everything that I learned while making this that we haven't seen yet. There's not a whole lot of these topics this playthrough around because not only do I think I was pretty thorough with talking about all the stuff that you guys told me about, I also let's played the first game and a lot of content is shared across both of them. So a lot of the interesting unused content that I would have talked to you about in the segment was already covered in that series. First off, there's several leftovers from black and white in this game that go unused, such as the title screen music. All the areas present in the first game, such as Route 10, still have their map data in the game, but there's no NPCs, no wild Pokemon, no working doors. It also requires a bit of tampering with the game to make these two areas function, but you don't need to inject any map data to do so, so it is technically in there. I don't think this is inherently bad as much as I complained about it. If it just didn't fit with the story or the world any longer, then just remove it. It's its own game. We still got the Route 10 music in the game, so no harm done. Tornadus and Thunderous might not natively be in Univit anymore, but their weather effects for when they're on the same route remain in the game. Every key item ever made since Ruby and Sapphire is in the code. This is a weird tradition that still carries on even in 2023. Here's every trainer card upgrade we never got. Um, your, your chinchino is doing things to my leg. Alongside the release of this game, they made a Pokedex app for the 3DS and even ported it to iOS. I always wondered why they didn't sell digital official guides like this with how complicated their games are and thought this made perfect sense for them to do from now on. They charged money for this, never updated it once, released X and Y less than a year later, obsoleting the whole thing, and never did it again. Good job. Did you know that when playing on an original DS, the battery meter only has two pips instead of three? This is because the original DS BIOS only tracks if the battery is low and not low. A battery meter with a percentage was only added in the DSi onward. There's leftover code for an additional... I'm having a lot of trouble walking up these stairs. <laughs> There's additional code for uh, a, another mode that would have belonged to the lady on the right-hand side of every Pokemon Center. There was barely any code left of this mode, so we don't know what it could have been. It wasn't in black and white either, so it's suspicious and probably something new. Or maybe it isn't a lost feature at all and you just access it from the sea gear in the final game. That could also be the case. This game contains an unused Pokemon. Sort of. Despite not being transferable to Black White, Black 2, or White 2, the Manaphy Egg was made, and even as simple animations that go unseen, it fully functions. Mom had phone calls written for the Plasma Frigate, Entralink, Route 10, and the Royal Unova, even though you can't call them. They read, What? The Plasma Frigate? Never heard of it. Should I go have a look and see what it's like? Entralink? I don't know about that. Is there a place like that in the Univer region? Ah, I liked Route 10. There was something lyrical about it. I really am my mother's child. The Royal Unova, a cruise ship from Castelia. You're getting pretty fancy. So, what's it gonna be? Are you gonna have fun battling or enjoy the sights? Reversal Mountain changes its layout between Black 2 and White 2. It seems as though White 2 was made first and Black 2's was an edit of it because there's a whole section of this cave that's normally accessible in White 2 but can never be walked into in Black 2. It's there, you can see it, you just can't actually go there. It seems that in Route 21 you would have been able to go above Seaside Cave to that flowery meadow. There's a warp that takes you to the Plasma Frigate up there as well, meaning that the dock likely would have extended there and not to the beach at one point in development. Here's a few obscure side quests I missed. I didn't even realize they were side quests at all. For this first one, we need to get a Charizard, and I know just the place. Ooh, I got a female Charmander from this. You can set that in the Dream World settings, but I didn't do that. I got that randomly. <laughs> the Drift Fail Drawbridge. It's also known as Charizard Bridge because the raised drawbridge looks like a Pokemon called Charizard. But I've never seen a Charizard, so I don't know. What? Are you with Charizard? Uh, kid, you don't need to stare at... Uh, wow, awesome! Yeah, I think this looks like a Charizard. Really, I thought it looked like a little girl. <laughs> Thanks, as a token of my appreciation, please accept this. A heel powder! What is it with side quests asking for obscure hard to find Pokemon and giving you worthless crap? I wonder if people made the drawbridge with Charizard. 
This one I'm sad I missed out on. If we go back to Village Bridge, which looks stunning at nighttime, by the way, and go inside to talk to this girl again after she kicked us out. Be -be -be. Woo! Eek! I'm practicing, get out! Then talk to this girl. I hear a sound from somewhere. Sometimes it sounds sad. Sometimes it sounds a little goofy. Do you think it could be a ghost? What? A girl practicing music in a house? I, that's not a house. <laughs> that is a sad house. I see, I got it, thank you. Accept the, these as a thank you gift. Citrus berries, nice quest, nice quest. Keep somebody's secret, otherwise your secret will be out. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, walking away. There's a side quest in Shopping Mall 9. I've come to do some shopping, but I'm having ever so much trouble finding out what is sold where. Would you be so kind as to buy a Hyper Potion for me? I'll give you money for it. Why, thank you, here is the money for it. Just a Hyper Potion, please. Thank you ever so much for your help. It's a Hyper Potion, thank you for buying it so quickly. This isn't much, but please take it. An energy root. Shopping is so much fun. I'm thrilled with all I've accomplished. Okay. Do you find the puzzle in Driftvale Gym annoying and tedious? No? Well, here's a solution anyway. If you look at the rightmost monitor in the lobby at the start, it shows you the solution to the puzzle. You ever wondered how to make that pissy lady who wants you to walk her mean foo for her even pissier? Wonder no more. Hey you! What are you doing? In front of my very eyes, you just ripped me to his walk! On top of that, you got engrossed in watching TV! What nerve! Stop taking a break and walk my mean foo! Hey you! What are you doing? Do you have your victim's severed heads in the garbage, lady? What is this? You have the audacity to take the trash can in my house! It's not good for the education of my mean foo! No matter how many times you check, the trash can is empty! Keep focus on walking! They are making fun of us hardcore for checking every garbage can in every Pokemon game, all because they put a great ball in one of them one time. By the entrance to Seaside Cave, he gets slipped behind this tree where there's a fisherman. I guess he's there to signify that you can and get a pee pee up. There's a decently useful item tucked away in the corner of the plasma frigate that I never found. TM67 Retaliate. Can't call that useless. It's funny, because it's one of the given TMs uh, from a gym leader in the first game. Out on Route 7, past the Dancing Clown. I never picked up this! TM81X Scissor! I don't think that would have been necessarily helpful for me to have as a TM. We have it naturally on Lasagna, and Bug's not exactly a good coverage type on a lot of Pokemon, but that is something. You know how you don't need badges to use HM moves in this game? Well then what would happen if you somehow started the journey with a surfing Pokemon and used it to go up to the top of this cliff to talk to Alder before he broke his ankle? You can use Surf? Nice! We can be Surf Buddies! <laughs> the bogus explanations for why we can't go places in this game are to die for. <laughs> this place is extra wacky! We can walk in the wall for two squares. <laughs> Third time this has happened in this game. Works perfectly though, nothing wrong with it. You can just have some fun, banging your head into a wall until you dent it. Verizon on the other hand will let you talk to it at the top of the waterfall before it breaks its ankle. If we take Victini back to Liberty Garden, after, be after meeting Professor Juniper in person, oh, Victini. In the Unova Pokedex, Victini was assigned a special number, zero. I've heard the special number was assigned in the hope that Victini's power to bring victory would be shared with the trainer who travels with this Pokedex. How do you relate to Pokemon? As you fill your Pokedex, you'll find your own answer. That's what I'm hoping for. See you. Well, if the last Victini cutscene we saw here was not the most obscure cutscene in the game, that definitely is. <laughs> There's more of a correction on my part. The fossil guy in Twist Mountain, I said he could give you any fossil. He cannot give the Plumer cover fossils, even though we're in Unova and that's where they're from. I don't get it, but 
He can't give you those. You can only get those from Lenora or from the fossil store in Join Avenue. If you want to hunt these fossils, the NPCs that will sell them to you are named Aneta, Agata, and Jane. I said that Black Tower was objectively worse than White Tree Hollow because it does not have the chancy blissy trainers. That's true, but it has rich boys and socialites, which give you more money. But it kind of balances it out because the stores in Black City are a lot more expensive. $60,000! So no, I think that White Tree Hollow is objectively better, but you can still get money if you don't buy the stuff here. And my friends, we're going to Nimbasa City to cover our very last topic of them all. The Ferris Wheel! Now that you mentioned, I've been in Nimbasa City many times, but I've never ridden the Ferris Wheel. We wrote this with Bianca earlier. I don't believe that Sharon's been here yet. I don't really get what's so fun about riding the Ferris wheel. Gotta be a party pooper, dude. That's the Skyara Bridge, and that's Pinwheel Forest over there. Maybe I enjoyed that a little bit. I guess I still need to work on having fun. <laughs> he definitely is an elementary school teacher. <laughs> Everything is an experience. Thanks for writing with me. That's a big help. Charon and Bianca can be here on certain days during the post game, but we care a lot more about another guest. After either catching or defeating Kurum at Giant Chasm, come to the Ferris wheel on Fridays. <laughs> this sure takes me back. You, ride the Ferris wheel with me. You remind me of that trainer. Now that I think about it, we both rode this ferris wheel too. Making dreams come true is hard. I wonder if we will meet again. That made me remember that day. Sorry, I'll be going. Now where could you be going off to? How surprising. I didn't expect you'd come here. Well, that is the formula for other understanding other trainers, after all. You're okay with a Pokemon battle, right? Good. I thought there was no battle more fitting to be our last one. And we'll have a different team dependent on each of the four seasons, having a different weather summoner in his lead slot. As it's presently winter, he has a hail team, leading with Obama Snow, Grass Ice type, Snow Warning for its ability, holding a life orb, Blizzard, Wood Hammer, Earthquake, and Grass Whistle. Obama Snow is probably the worst out of all weather summoners, and I am beyond not afraid of you. I'm just gonna brick break you and not even overheat yet. I'm saving overheat for a really dangerous Pokemon. I'm sorry, you suck. I don't eat my words, yay! Who's up next? I'm gonna get buffeted by my hail, unfortunately. Cloyster, well, good choice there. Cloyster is water ice type with skill link for its ability. I approve of that choice. And it's got Icicle Spear, Hydro Pump, Ice Shard, and Shell Smash. I think you're gonna try to set up predicting that I'm gonna switch out because you're a water type, so I'm gonna stay in. I'm gonna go for Overheat. You have almost no special defense. I don't plan on fighting all of these teams. I think one is plenty. There's not any additional reward for beating all of his teams, but yeah, I like that he that he does that. Um, the competitive scene of this generation was all about weather effects, and the abilities that permanently summoned it were everywhere, especially in single battles. I think this is an even more fitting final battle in hindsight. I like to think of this battle as the last time that weather effects mattered as much as they did. It's not that they didn't matter after this point, but Gen 5's end is sort of where they stopped being ubiquitous, as weather summoning abilities were nerfed to only last for five turns after this. 
It was the end of an era, unless we count things like Groudon and Kyogre's primal forms. It, they went out in style. So I feel like it was kind of symbolic that they did this, giving him all weather teams. It feels like they really listened to Kometic Community. I don't have harmony for this fight. I am down a team member. That's really bad. Mamoswine is one of his tougher Pokemon. He's got Ice Ground type, he's got Snow Cloak for his ability, and he's got Earthquake, Ice Shard, Blizzard, and Stone Edge. He's basically forced to just do Earthquake against uh, uh, Aiden here. Stumbling over my own Pokemon's names. We'll do Scald. And it's enough. Knew I could count on you, buddy. Who's up next? Nullifying my leftovers hurts. Frostlass. One of my personal favorite Pokemon is Ice Ghost type. Snow Cloak for its ability, so it's got buffed evasion right now. Holding an Ice Rock. And it's got Blizzard, Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Hail. He's able to lay down the Hail again later on in the fight to make things hard for you. Um, could be pretty rough. I don't think I worry about it too much. I'm so happy you don't have Destiny Bond, because that's always what you have, be having such high speed and so many weaknesses. Fetted by the Hail. Chomp, chomp. Eow, baby, eow. More, let me hear the voice of your Pokemon. You're, pff, are you gonna full restore, aren't you? I'm gonna heal this turn just to be on the safe side. And use full restore. Do this. This is not going to get me all the way to full health. I just realized that a little bit too late. <laughs> Go back up, Aiden. Ends one of the few characters that I feel like we have a lot of insight into where Masuda did a panel at a convention about the development of this game. It's one of the rare times I've ever gotten insight into the making of these. They treat Pokemon like a secret sauce they don't want anyone knowing about how it's made. Uh, but he said that um, Anne's, par Anne's true parents are an enigma. He is adopted after all. And even suggested that his parents might even be Pokemon themselves. Anne's hairstyle does make him resemble a Zoroark, and there was that Zoroark that disappeared into this castle never to be seen again where Anne was. I don't think that necessarily proves that he is a Zoroark, but it's interesting food for thought at the very least. Down you go. Who's up next? This hail going away would be excellent, but it's not going to, because this is the good version of these abilities before they went away after a few turns. Glaceon! You're Ice type, you have Snow Cloak, and you have Blizzard, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, and Attract. Sure. You have all special moves. Let's melt that ice with some hot water. Oh! Aiden, you might not have bred with anybody, but you fell in love, and she is within your egg group. Skull. He's like, girl, you're so hot. What a drink from my mouth. Gotta burn. It's only a matter of time if I fall in love with you or if I don't. Your moves will do nary a thing to me. I think I'm good to just stay on out, fish for a skull, see if I can get the traction not going horrible for me. That did absolutely nothing at all. It's Glaceon, what did you expect? So that means that you're ending on probably the silliest Pokemon that you have. Yes, 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 chomp down on that apple core, find a few more edible particles. Vanillux! Ice type with ice body holding an icy rock. Blizzard, flash cannon, signal beam, hail. Can play down a last second thing there? Yeah, we resist all of your moves except signal beam, which signal beam is pretty awful. <laughs> this was not that bad. It's only taken me two Pokemon to get this far. <laughs> well, you know, the burn had to go off sometime. Might as well have all of the instances where it actually worked be right at the very end all clumped together, making up for the average of how terrible luck I've had with it. You've got value. you got a value this time you have got to know each other. Is what he kind of said. I, I, I paraphrased a few words there because there's so much pressure to read it fast, man. Scald? You're going to die from the burn. You're going down. With that, and all four of his weather teams, Anne has officially trained more Pokemon than any character we have ever seen fight in the entire canon at 42 different species. Your Pokemon are happy. They are happy to be with you. Dang, ex-terrorists are loaded. 
I remember something Reshram told me once. Reshram and Zekram are searching for new possibilities by walking alongside humans. Meanwhile, those that live in the wild try to better themselves without relying on anyone else. There are many different Pokemon. And they're different ways of living. That is the true freedom of Pokemon. That is what connects a Pokemon to us. I will set off on another journey. There are still many Pokemon in the world I should talk to. And there is also a trainer I want to tell how I feel. Masuda also said that they purposely left the door open for a black and white three. He didn't think they would necessarily make one, but that's kind of how I interpreted that line after he said that. And going off on another journey, they said the reason why this game got made was because the development staff was most interested in End Story and wanted to see it continue. There was a lot of ways that it could have gone after the first game and they wanted to have closure about it. And I think they were right. He definitely was the character that the fans latched on the most to as well once the game actually released. Oh, whoa, we're coming home. <laughs> I need to heal, Mom. Let me just butt into this conversation and uh, let Bianca sniff my shampoo. I wish you knew how Pokemon felt. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Such a sad thing to say, actually, with her being a nurse and everything. We're gonna march up just as slow as we did on our first day. Time's come for us to collect our last medal. Three sixty. <laughs> the Pokemon I got from the Dream World in this video pushed us over the threshold for that. I didn't think we were gonna get that. Sleeping capture. I got the other ten. Ferris wheel fan. Someday I'll get to 200 medals, but it won't be today. Our final count was 185 out of 255. We did pretty darn well for ourselves. My previous record was in the 120s and I absolutely shattered that. I had a friend who I always considered a medal rival back in the day and I was always so upset that she always had more than me every time I talked to her about it. She has 146. I freaking destroyed her all these years later. She was my goal to work towards, and we freaking did it. I wish you luck in your metal rally endeavors, because this is where our journey ends for now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Pulse Effects for fact checking every single one of these videos for me. Could not have done this without you. Thank you to The Cutting Room Floor. Cerebi.net, Bulbapedia, Poke Classic Network, and Kurapoi, the developer of Entra Linked, who I all used as resources for my research during the development of this series. Thank you to Yoshiller for making every single informative sidebar on the edge of these videos. Thanks to Mr. Chris Mad for making every single metal graphic you saw. Thanks to Stochastic, who developed the software that was used in the creation of many graphics in this series. Thanks to Motion Dan for updating the visual designs of Steven George to be used in this series. Thank you once more to all the artists who made all of the wondrous portraits we got to enjoy with the legendary encounters. You made those moments feel so special. This is by far the largest amount of artwork for any Pokemon series on this channel, by far the most amount of information, by far the longest, and just the biggest in every single sense of what could be big. Thank you to everyone who came out to a convention, helping me get things for my Joint Avenue and for the Sea Gear so I could talk about all of those topics. Would not have been an easy thing to do without you. And last up, thank you to our team. <laughs> This is the strongest team we've ever assembled. And I think it means so much that at least one of the team member decisions was directly as a result of many of you criticizing me on something a long time ago and me coming around on it. Thank you, Pignati, McFly, Aiden, Jade, Harmony, Lasagna. You are all amazing.
So join us back here soon for the beginning of our Metal Rally exploits in the form of some live streams. Maybe a few other side videos here and there. Haven't really decided yet. And then join us back here again after that for something that is thankfully a lot shorter than this. See you guys then. So, did you get all that? All you need to do to 100% this game is complete the national decks, fill up every PC box, evolve a Pokemon 100 times, spend $10 million, play this game with a thousand other people, use 100 pass powers, catch 100 Pokemon in the entry forest, find all hidden grottos, catch 100 eggs, leave 100 Pokemon in the daycare, play in 100 multiplayer battles, you struggle, you splash, enter the battle subway 100 times, beat the subway bosses in singles, then doubles, then multi, do the battle institute test in Mbaza 50 times, earn 1 million EXP in a single day, save up 100 BP, ride the Royal Unova 10 times, defeat Unova leaders in Pokemon World Tournament, then Kanto, then Johto, then Hoenn, then Sinnoh, then all regions, then champions, Win Master Rentals, Master Mix, all type masters. Clear Area 10 in Black Tower, clear Area 10 in White Tree Hollow. Defeat 1,000 trainers in Black Tower or White Tree Hollow. Defeat all trainers in Area 2 through 5 of Black Tower or White Tree Hollow. Clear the same without battling more than 4 people, then 6 to 10. Then clear the same without battling more than 6. Clear the same in 1,000 steps. Trade 100 Pokemon, win 30 musicals, collect all musical props, get 10 followers of musicals, which will take playing the musicals at least 120 times. Fill up the pal pad with 32 friend codes. Trade with someone from another version, trade with someone from another country. Play spin trade, use the feeling check 10 times. Ride the Ferris wheel with everyone you could possibly ride it with, get 100 souvenirs in Joint Avenue, give Joint Avenue a name, play the x turn mini minigames 100 times, reach 1,000 points on the balloon mini games. get all strange endings in Pokestar Studios, play a fun fest with 30 people at the same time in a local only setting, score 1,000 points in a fun fest which takes at least 50 people to do locally, host 50 fun fest, participate in 10 fun fest, win 100 fun fest, clear all fun fest games seen using a private server, see all memory link flashbacks, defeat the champion using only normal, only fire, only water, only electric, grass, ice, fighting, poison, ground, flying, psychic, bug, rock, ghost, dragon, dark, and steel Pokemon, and with only one Pokemon. Easy, right?